Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's talk about the electric flux and the units associated with it. Let's say we have a charged object that has excess positive charge, which therefore emanates an electric field in all directions. And let's say then we put an imaginary sphere around it, kind of like a Gaussian surface. And the surface is a distance r away from the center of the object. Now, the question may be, what is the electric flux emanating from that charged object through the Gaussian surface? So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the strength of the electric field at the Gaussian surface times the total surface area, which then tells us that is equal to the electric flux. It kind of tells you the total number of electric field lines emanating from that charged object. Because it doesn't really matter if the radius is small or if the radius is big, you'll get the same quantity and we'll see that in just a moment. So first of all, the area of a sphere, if we forgot, is equal to 4 pi r squared and the electric field as a function of distance away from a charged object is equal to k q over r squared where q is all of the charge on the object and if we let r equals the radius of that sphere then it becomes k q over large r squared. So now here we have the product of the electric field at the surface times the area of the surface. So it's the k q over r squared times 4 pi r squared. Notice that in this case the r squared cancels out and that leaves us with 4 pi k times q. Now if we remember that k could also be expressed in terms of 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught where epsilon sub naught was the permittivity of free space. If we do that this can then be reduced to q over epsilon sub naught because k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, so the 4 pi's cancel, and we're left at epsilon sub naught. Which means that the electric flux is simply a function of the total charge on the object divided by epsilon sub naught, which means it gives you the total amount of electric line flux or electric field flux emanating from that charged object, irregardless of how big the radius is. You see, the radius simply cancels out. So what are the units for that? Well, we have to remember the unit for epsilon sub naught. Since the units for k were equal to, well, that would be newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. That means the units for epsilon sub naught is the inverse of that, which is coulomb squared divided by newton times meter squared. And if we plug that in here, we can say then that the units for charge is coulombs and the unit for the electric field is coulomb squared divided by newton meter squared, which goes to the top, newton meter squared, which means this cancels out that, and then we're left with the units of newtons meter squared divided by coulomb squared. Oh, no longer coulomb squared, the square is gone, divided by coulomb. Now, think about it this way. Newtons per coulomb, that was the unit for electric field, and meter squared is area, so therefore, electric field, area, those seem to be the proper units for the electric flux. And so that's how we find out what the electric flux means and how we express it in terms of units. Even though the electric flux can be calculated without knowing, knowing the size of the Gaussian surface or the size of the imaginary surface, it's simply the total charge on the object divided by epsilon sub naught, but also it can be termed in terms of the strength of the electric field at a particular location times the surface area at that location engulfing the charge object. And that's how we know.